You've got to love the president of Namibia, H. Heinhoff. I hope I pronounced that correctly. <laughs> Please let me know if I, <laughs> I don't murder this name. H. Heinhoff. Very good man. Very strong. Just how we liked him. This president continues to impress me and the rest of the world, I believe, for a very long time now. So lately he had a meeting with the Finnish president. The Finnish president came to Namibia to return some artifact that Finland took from Namibia a long, long time ago, hundreds of years ago, as a, you know, to show that they've moved on to come in sort of way to apologize. Please watch this before we continue. The stone fragments were taken by Finnish missionaries, Marty Rautanen, more than 130 years ago from the Ondonga Kingdom. Rautanen was believed to be on a research mission when he came across the stone and took parts of it for experiments. The fragments have since been kept in the National Museum of Finland until negotiations started more than four years ago to return them to Namibia. President Genkop says government will officially hand over the sacred cultural item to the Ondonga Traditional Authority on a date yet to be announced. He commended the gesture and called on other countries that are still in possession of Africa's artifacts to follow suit. So as you see, Finland has returned two fragments of sacred historical artifacts that were taken from Namibia during colonial times. The artifacts, which are sacred stone, were taken from traditional kingdom of Ovambo kingdom. So you can see, guys, they came to Africa taking things the way they wanted, even sacred stuff. These are spiritual stuff that means the world to some people. But they took it. Unbelievable. President Solini needs to say that Odonga Power Stone, as it was called, precious not only to Odonga community, but also considered part of the identity and the heritage of the community. So those stones were part of the identity and heritage of Odongo people, but was taken away from them because of strength and power. So the Namibian president, Haj Heinhob, said the stone return should serve as an example to all that have stolen things from Africa. That's why I love this president. He doesn't mash his word. He, say, he says things the way they should be said. Tell it like it is. All that have stolen things from Africa should come and bring it back. And this makes me think of somebody very particular. The French president, Emmanuel Macron, five years ago, made a promise. He said, as soon as I'm voted president, because France has taken so many things from Africa, I'm going to return every single thing that France has taken from Africa. He was speaking to students, 800 students in Benin. Five years down the line, nothing has happened. And this is... Shocking because so many things have been taken from Africa, from gold, diamonds, statues, traditional powerful things have been taken from Africa. Even people's heads have been taken from Africa. Yeah, we're going to get back to that. And what's interesting in this story is at the end of the 19th century, uh, they were constructing a railway between Uganda and Kenya because at the time, obviously, it was big forest. They needed to find a way to steal stuff quicker. Faster. So from Uganda to the sea, it's very complicated because Uganda has no sea, no sea coast. So they had to create very quickly railway between Kenya and Uganda. During that time, they took a lot of Africans as workloads. A lot of Africans forced to, to work very, very hard with so much pain and difficulty to try to achieve this work. But during that time, unfortunately, there were two lions that massacred people. Yeah, two lions. They called the Lions of Tova. Two lions murdered people unbelievably. It was drastic. It was horrendous. They worked very hard to try to defeat these lions by killing them. After killing the lions, they took them and sent them to England in museums where they are up until today. And Kenya still asks for those lions. And I firmly believe if they're going to be honest, if they're going to teach us how to be in a world, they should be able to return all this stuff that they've taken. It's not just lions, diamonds, in the crown now of the King Charles. So many other things have been taken from Africa. What's even more shocking about this is Europe has taken so many things from Africa, but the hypocrisy of returning them is just mind-boggling. In Germany today, in museums, you will find African skulls. Yes, African skulls in museums in Germany. And what's the reason the skulls are there? This is for historical purpose. Now, let me ask you a question. You remember the people that Hitler in Germany. If you take those people's skulls and put them in museums, saying it's here for historical reason. Will the world be okay with that? Do you remember those people? Can you just imagine taking their skulls and putting them into museums? Will people be okay with that? Absolutely not. So why are African skulls more than 10,000 in Germany? 
And this is something you can double check. You can check yourself on the internet. You're going to find the fact. Germany returned 200 scars and kept other. Why do they keep other scars? That's disrespectful. So on top of this, the president of Finland, Ninisto, made a comment about Russia and Ukraine, saying that South Africa has accepted to host President Putin during the meeting of the BRICS. Is that the same stance as the stance that the Namibian president is going to take? President, you have said that you don't support the decision of the International Criminal Court to arrest Russian President Vladimir Putin. Can you tell why is that? And do you have a neutral position on uh, war in Ukraine like South Africa does? And a follow up to President Nienista. Mr. President, you have talked about Russia's war here in Africa that have consequences also to Africa. Uh, have you cut some your message through here? Well, uh, when I was in South Africa, that issue was asked. It's not my problem. They were asking South African president about Putin is going to be arrested and so on. I commented on the history, when I was in Nairobi, Mrs. Clinton was the Secretary of State of America. And she was that time advocating that former Kenneth, uh, President of Kenya, Kenyatta, Luto, to be sent to this IC. And what I ask her is, why are you not a member of what's it? IC, ICC? You're not a member of it. Why? She said they cannot send their citizens to the International Criminal Court because they have courts that can try. I said, oh, but Africans must send theirs to that court. So they are assigned. And I said, well, as far as I'm concerned, if that court is only targeting African leaders, and most of the European countries, Western, they are not members of it. Was the court meant for Africans only? So we also, in Namibia, I said, we have our independent institutions. Our courts are independent. And therefore, if anybody commits a crime here, they must be tried by our courts and not in the criminal court. That court uh, was set up according to Kofi Annan at the request of Africans, apparently. And I said, if Africans that time didn't have their own institutions that could try their own people, now we have it. Namibia has it. Our courts are independent. They wouldn't need to go to that. I don't need it. That's my point. You are not a member of it. You didn't sign. You are not part of it. All mostly Western countries. Yet, they want that to be used against Africans. That's our position. The Namibian president was very adamant about it. He said, a few years back I was in Kenya and Hillary Clinton was in Kenya when I was in Kenya. And she made a comment about Africans being okay with ICC. She said Africans should join ICC, ICC, which is the International Court of Justice. It's a good thing because if somebody does something wrong, a genocide or crime of war, anything like that, it can be brought into justice, which is a very good thing. We want to see these people being brought into justice, right? But the question the president of Namibia asked her was, why isn't the United States of America part of the ICC? Now, it's good that you tell us what we should do. You say that we should be part of this justice group, which will call people into justice should they do anything wrong. Why aren't you guys part of it? And she said, well, the reason why we're not part of this is because the United States has got a justice system that's functional. Any citizen of the United States who does something wrong will be judged in the United States. And he said, okay, that's great. Well, we have functional justice system too in Africa. We don't need to send any of our guys to the ICC which is a very strong response for a very strong African man. So I find it's very interesting, guys. Let, let me know what you think. Is this right? Was this a good step from the Namibian president telling it as he is? 
or is this being too bold? And my personal view is that many African presidents need to be stronger, need to express themselves more openly about how they feel. I know many presidents feel the same way. They would like to show that they're not happy about certain things. Nobody want to see anybody coming from elsewhere and come tell them how to run their house. No, nobody wants to see that. You want to be the boss of your house. Do your things the way you do them. Keep your tradition and your culture. You don't want anybody to come into your house and tell you how to live. But unfortunately, many African presidents want to stay in power for, long, for a very long time. They want to overstay the power. And that's the reason why they are obedient to the West. You need to be obedient to the West to stay over the limit frame of time that you have in power. But this man who's done his work and he's going to be out very, very soon and showed many people how we should conduct ourselves as free citizens. God bless.